Right, welcome everybody to today's webinar from the management of BizLink. We have John Hawkins, Executive Chairman, and Ian Davis, the Group Financial Officer. Uh, they have produced uh, a very interesting set of results today. I'm sure you will have seen our commentary on it. Uh, but the purpose of this webinar is to talk not just about the, the past, but about the future. And so I shall rapidly pass over to John Hawkins. Okay, many thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think before we go into the uh, highlights of 2013, I think it would be useful to really try and position BizLink uh, going forward over the next three to five years, because we now believe that we're starting to get the building blocks in place to really drive growth for this business over that uh, period of time. Um, you will have seen uh, last week that we announced the acquisition of uh, Pebble Beach Software. This takes us into uh, a new area for BizLink, but related to our broadcast business. Our current core business has been the collection of video using a variety of wireless technologies. And Pebble Beach gives us the playout uh, automation and channel in a box capabilities. So effectively taking that uh, video content and through the studio turning it that into content that can be played out either to a second screen or through to the television at home. So we now believe that we've got a full service capability in terms of collecting video as well as transmitting that content through the studio and out to the other, to the other side. So that's a really important element of what we've done. I think the other point to make here is over the course of probably the last 18 months to two years, we've completely revamped our current portfolio of products. And we now have a very, very modern platform in terms of our hardware uh, attributes. So the market uh, that we're in for video contribution is slowly but surely going to IP, so over the internet for, uh, for simplification. And what we've been doing as a company is really investing in IP and in cellular. And again, today we announced a partnership with TVU, who have been really the, the uh, market leaders in developing the cellular technology in this space. Where it uh, complements this link and where we come together is what we call the hybrid technology. So this is really combining traditional microwave satellite communications as well as cellular into one device. So one camera back that sits on the back of the camera that delivers the video content wirelessly back to a studio. So let's just uh, cover the uh, highlights and then I'm going to hand over to uh, Ian to go through the numbers in a little bit more detail. Um, order intake was up 20%, uh, sales were up about 5% and our profits were up 40% in 2013. Um, that was really off the back of uh, some pretty substantial investment in our products and also extending our channels to market. So in preparation for the World Cup, in preparation for the Olympics in Brazil, we've opened up an office in Brazil to give us access to, uh, to those opportunities. And if we look back to the Olympics in the UK, we've probably got more business through security and surveillance than we did supplying and equipping our traditional customers as broadcasters um, through that uh, event. So we believe that there is security, surveillance and broadcast opportunities, not just in Brazil, but across uh, South America. Just coming back to uh, Pebble Beach for a little bit, not only does Pebble Beach get us into uh, a brand new area, it also means that we've now extended the available market that, uh, that is an opportunity for us as BizLink. So if you look at the core of BizLink as, as it's been known over the years, it's been in the broadcast area, delivering video content largely. We extended that reach a couple of years ago and said that our intentions over the 
the, uh, the years to the end of this year, we want to get to 25% of our business coming from security and surveillance. So again, same technology, different application. And I'm pleased to say that in 2013, we actually grew our revenues in this area by about 18%, and it represents now about 20% of our overall turnover. So the 25% target is within reach. Um, at the very beginning of 2014, uh, we actually um, managed to achieve a major contract in the government space. Uh, which will which will mean that we've got approximately £7 million worth of sales for this year if we deliver that contract throughout 2014. So again, the whole balance between our surveillance and security business and our broadcast business is important to us. The surveillance as a market gives us about a £200 million market added to the broadcast traditional business, which is about 200 30 million. What we've just added in the last few days is two new market opportunities for us. One is in the wireless cellular video contribution market, which is about a 50 million pound market opportunity, and that's been growing at about 50% year on year compound growth. To that, we've added the software plow, automation, channel in the box, capabilities of Pebble Beach and that will give us conservatively about a 200 million pound market to go after. An element of that is Chamber in the Box which is what it says, it's developing and providing all of the software and all the capability for a broadcaster to, to have a packaged solution to provide for new programming. And that market is growing at 27% compound growth annually and is, is expected to continue to grow well into 2014 um, and so it gives us one high growth and two, again, a bigger market opportunity to go after. So our market availability has gone up by approximately a third. If you add to that the fact that we, we've almost repurpose and redeveloped all of our uh, major products over the last 18 months. We've created a really very good platform for growth for our business over the coming years. And we remain um, confident of the fact that uh, the target that we'd had, we set ourselves in 2011 to get to 80 million of sales this year and 8 million of profit um, is a target that we still believe is, is achievable. We've still got a relatively strong balance sheet. We've uh, acquired some good businesses over the last three years and we believe with acquisitions and with the organic growth that will come from our increased um, market availability that this will hold us in good stead for not just 2014 but uh, beyond. So. On uh, the next page, we've got a, a diagram which shows what we call from first scene to screen, um, from screen, scene to screen, sorry. Um, maybe I'll add two words to that and say what we do is from first on the scene to second screen. And if you think about that, that really describes uh, this link of today. So in the broadcast sense, we're providing very modern communications to allow, allow journalists, wherever they are, and whatever wireless technology they choose to use, to be able to get their story back to a studio. Either using the internet or using our mobile MSAT product, which means that they can use satellite communications to get the story back to, uh, to the studio. So they're first on the scene. And with the uh, internet protocol IP workflows now, that story can be tran transmitted to a traditional TV or to your iPad or your uh, iPhone. So second screen is becoming very important for broadcasters and the flexibility of how they put their 
workflows together is really what Pebble Beach do. So they take that content and they convert it easily so that it, it can be displayed on the first screen, which traditionally is a television, to the second screen, which is an iPad or a, a smart uh, smartphone or device. The same happens in the surveillance market. So if you look at the next slide, what we're doing there is we're doing the same. We're, we're using our wireless technology to deliver high definition video, uh, either by uh, up, uploading it to a helicopter and then downloading it to a command and control center, uh, or indeed uh, encrypting that data and then sending it to a policeman on the ground uh, or a soldier on the ground using a, a second screen. So we're doing exactly the same as we've done in our broadcast business and applying that to the security and surveillance business. In the same way also that we're using our technology for what we call the smart soldier. So this is again equipping special forces and uh, smaller patrols with highly efficient, lightweight communications using again traditional satellite communications or some of our other technologies. So at this stage what I'd like to do is hand over to, uh, to Ian Davis who's going to take you through the numbers in a little bit more detail and then I will come back and uh, cover the strategy going forward in a little bit more detail. Ian over to you. Hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all we're going to have an overview of the results for 2013. So as John touched on, a good set of results and basically we've delivered what we set out to deliver in 2013. We've seen order intake rise over 20% to 60 million. We've seen revenue up just under 5%, just under 60 million. And that included a contribution from amplifier technology of about 0.6 of a million. Adjusted operating profit um, ahead of slightly ahead of city forecast at 4.3 million, up 40% on the prior year. And as a group, uh, we're also very pleased that we've kept our strong balance sheet at the end of 2013. We finished with net cash on the balance sheet of over 3.7 million. So if you look at that in a little bit more detail, if you go onto the 2013 Financial Highlights Sustained Profitable Growth slide. Um, for those who are relatively new to BizLink, what this shows is the progression the group has made over the past few years. So as John has alluded to in 2011, we set out our strategy to, to turn around the group. Because in 2010, on just over 40 million of uh, revenue, the group lost just over 8 million pounds. And what we've now seen is five successive halves of sustained profit from the group. So the group now has a very solid foundation in terms of its underlying performance. In terms of what the business does, uh, as John mentioned, we're about 20% surveillance, 80% broadcast. Again, this has increased in recent years as we look to balance our revenue. And our target for surveillance is to get the surveillance proportion of our business to over 25%. We believe with a marketplace that's available to us in surveillance, this is eminently achievable. Uh, we saw both our surveillance business and broadcast business grow in 2013, with surveillance in particular giving us a very pleasing growth of over 16%, uh, and as I said, now representing just under 20% of the group. Broadcast also grew. In terms of the marketplaces, the largest marketplace for broadcast is still very much the United States, and so our overall growth is achieved against the background in the US where they generally have quite a quiet year, year post the presidential elections. What we're also seeing is an increase in growth across the, across the world in emerging marketplaces. So for us in 2013, the Middle East was a very important marketplace in terms of both broadcast and surveillance. But looking forward, we see other marketplaces such as Latin America becoming increasingly important as well. And that's one of the reasons that we've invested in both our products and in our sales channels. So if you can have a look at the operating profit bridge slide, one of the things you can see on that operating profit bridge slide is that we have invested in you in terms of sales and marketing. So this is including new exhibitions and new events that we've been to to promote the surveillance side of our business, but also we've opened a new sales office in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and we've hired more people around the world to, to increase our channels to market. Our channels to market are not just direct sales force, but we also work with significant partners in all the major territories. And we see many growth markets around the world, including places not just Brazil and Latin America, but Mexico, Venezuela, Argentina, 
and in other, other parts of the world, um, the Middle East is becoming increasingly important. But also areas such as uh, Indonesia and, and Malaysia and other areas within APAC. So we're happy to invest to grow ourselves in uh, marketing channels to market. And that's what we've done in 2013. Um, the other thing we can see which is pleasing as well is we very much maintained our gross margins. It's our ambition as a group to increase our operating margin and that was publicly stated in 2011. We want to get north of 10% operating margin for the group. And that's been supported by recent acquisitions. So Amplifier Technology as an example, that business is a gross margin north of 55%. Um, Pebble Beach, which we recently announced the acquisition of, as in line with many software businesses, that will have a gross margin that's going to be in excess of 80%. So whilst the overall gross margin of the group we saw tick up in 2013, we, are, we retain our ambition to increase the operating margin of the group going forward as well. One area I'm going to cover in a little bit more detail is capitalised development costs and our investment in R&D, which John's already touched on. So if we have a look at the investment in new technology slide, one of the advantages now of being a sustained profitable business is, is that very much we can now choose to invest our, our cash where we want to. And one of the areas we've chosen to invest is in developing new products. So this isn't just a question of updating our existing products. This is really about developing new platforms and very much retaining product leadership within our sector. So the platforms we've delivered in 2013 is an extension of the MSAT product, which is pictured top right hand side of that slide. In 2012, we launched a surveillance version. In 2013, the broadcast version has been developed. And predominantly, those sales will be appearing in 2014. We also introduced the world's uh, best, we believe, wireless camera back, the Link 1700 in 2013. And again, that's going to be a platform for major development and growth, including developing the hybrid versions of that, which will incorporate cellular solutions. We've also incorporated our products into camera manufacturers such as Sony and Grass Valley. Um, again, um, major partnerships with major camera manufacturers delivering products that we believe the marketplace wants. And perhaps interestingly, on the bottom right-hand side of that slide is in some ways one of our most important products, is the new stream. This is effectively a box that will go into areas such as outside broadcast trucks. And what this box does is links all the developing technologies, whether it's cellular, satellite, microwave, MIMO, mesh, whatever those technologies may be, and provide the broadcaster or indeed the surveillance organization with a hub with which to manage all of those technologies. So again, this is a core platform going forward in our USP is, the, is being able to develop the best products in the world and then linking them into the best complete co customer solutions on offer in the marketplace. So as part of that, we did invest over four and a half million into capitalized development costs in 2013. And we're very happy to do so because that's what's going to drive the organic growth, drive our strategic partnerships, and help us build the group above and beyond 2014. If we have a look at the cash flow, what you can see there is really the two stories I've just mentioned evolving. So in terms of the profitability of the group, over 4 million cash inflow from our operating activities, and we've invested uh, much of that cash, cash inflow. So part of that was in um, paying for the acquisition of Amplifier Technology. So 2 million of that went towards Amplifier Technology. Um, 400,000 went towards the final deferred considerations and a couple of previous acquisitions. And then 4.5 million into the development of new products as we've just touched on before. In addition, of course, we've got the dividend that we pay out. But overall, at the end of 2013, we still ended up with net cash on our balance sheet of 3.7 million. And then going into this financial year, as part of the uh, Pebble Beach acquisition, and in line with our aspirations to grow the group, we've put in place a brand new 10 million debt facility, which is 7 million RCF, 3 million amortizing term loan. So again, that gives us even more firepower to continue to grow the group, both organically and through whatever other investments we choose to make. So in summary, on the financial summary, the, the two key points I just wanted to pick out on this is we've always referred to an adjusted earnings per share number, uh, which is basically our adjusted operating profit number after tax. But we thought this year, in addition to that, we'd also disclose an adjusted earnings per share normalized for corporate tax. The reason for that is we have got trade losses uh, and some of those are fed through into deferred tax benefits. So as a result, the 4.2 pence will be impacted by the movement in deferred taxation. So we're aware that some analysts and people who look at our numbers quite like to use an adjusted tax uh, number. So what we've done on the 3.2 pence number highlighted on that page is effectively assumed a UK long-term corporation tax rate of 20%. 
but having said that, both those numbers show good growth. So the adjusted EPS number has grown from 2.5 to 4.2. Um, the adjusted for normalized UK corporate tax has, shown, has grown from 2.2 to 3.2. And both of those numbers are shown in the highlight section of our RNS. And then the final point is that we have a proposed dividend per share of 1.25 pence in line with previous years. The cash impact of that will, of course, have increased slightly as a result of the additional shares as part of the um, Pebble Beach acquisition. So effectively, our cash cost of the dividend has moved from 1.4 million to 1.5 million, but again, eminently affordable, both in terms of good dividend cover and in terms of the funding of the group. So that's all I wanted to cover in terms of um, the highlights financially. So I'm going to pass it across to John again, who's going to pick up on the strategic review. Okay, thanks, Ian. <clears throat> so we make no uh, excuses about uh, using this slide, which we produced in 2011 which uh, outlined our plan from 2011 to 2014 in terms of how we proposed to really transition the group. Um, first stages of that was to uh, completely restructure the business, um, outsource manufacturing to make sure that we have the benefit of, of scaling the business without scaling the costs. So we have now a variable cost model uh, from a manufacturing point of view, so we get spikes in our business, we can we can take advantage of these from a profit point of view without putting lots of costs into the business. So that was an important uh, aspect of what we were doing. We took about 22% of the costs out at that stage, but at the same time we invested in sales, and our sales channels, and we invested in product development. And as I said earlier on, we pretty much completely um, uh, rebuilt uh, new technologies and new products over the last couple of years um, and those, those uh, investments will be amortized over the next three years but if you look at some of the products that they're replacing those products have been in the market and been selling in the market for 20-25 years so that investment will pay off uh, not just in the short term, but also in, in the long term. We have invested in IP and cellular technology. Uh, we've invested in lightweight, state-of-the-art systems, which is what the markets demand. And we've acquired three businesses, three acquisitions. Uh, Gigawave, which effectively gave us market leadership in, uh, in the uh, provision of in-car and in-vehicle uh, capability. So um, Formula One, MotoGP, and latterly Formula E, which is uh, all using and, uh, and showcasing the Gigawave technology. The uh, acquisition that we referred to earlier on in the presentation, so we, we won in January a uh, multi-million pound uh, government contract was derived from Gigaway and their technology. In the summer of last year, we added Amplifier technology, which gave us the mobile jamming uh, technology, which is deployed and, in, and utilized with a modern soldier, which effectively provides um, those soldiers with the ability to block mobile signals, which are used to, uh, to detonate um, incendiary devices in the field. So that not only gave us the technology, but it also gave us access to, uh, to new markets. And as we referenced earlier on, a couple of weeks ago, we invested in our software business with the acquisition of uh, Pebble Beach. It's worth saying that uh, Gigawave, um, we've already effectively paid for that acquisition. Um, an amplifier um, clearly was a very good business for us to acquire and the earnout for Amplify this year to June is that they have to get to 3 million of uh, EBITDA for that business, generate 80% of that in cash and if they achieve that they would earn another 2 million as far as that consideration is concerned on top of the 2 million that we paid for the business. Again, Amplifier has made a good start 
and in, in uh, January took a, uh, an order in excess of £4 million, pounds, which will obviously help that business uh, in 2013. Um, Pebble Beach, I think we covered um, in quite a lot of detail, and I'm also conscious of, of the, uh, the time here. Um, and so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to really the penultimate slide, which was the slide on expansion of the available market. So this for us is key, that what we're doing now is we're extending our reach, uh, particularly in the broadcast space, moving into very high growth areas uh, with very modern platforms and very modern technology, which will help to propel our growth. It's also worth saying that uh, the Pebble Beach management are committed to this business over the long term. We have a long term plan to grow our software business with their help to achieve that and to really exploit the uh, growth that's available in the marketplace. So in January of this year we moved to AIM. Um, the primary reason for that was to enable us to, to make acquisitions freely. Um, we went into this year uh, with no debt uh, on our balance sheet. I think we paid a sensible price for Pebble Beach, which will give us uh, recurring revenues in our business and higher margins in our overall business. Um, so in terms of how we're positioned for this year, we remain very confident about our targets that we set ourselves in 2011, which was to achieve 80 million of sales and 8 million of profit. Um, we did not preclude at that stage that, that we would make acquisitions. And I think we proved as a management that we can make the right acquisitions at the right time and with the right price. That all said, we never will, and we never have put ourselves in a position where we have to make acquisitions to make our numbers. I think that's very important. So we believe that we've, we're now extremely well equipped to actually grow this business organically and that the acquisitions that we've made are all accretive and all will contribute to our short term, what is short term growth now for 2014. But more importantly, we've built a sustainable platform for probably the next five to ten years for this thing. Thank you very much. I think we're now into questions and hopefully answers. Okay, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. A um, number of questions, uh, quite often not related themes. Uh, firstly, uh, James would just like to clarify on the amplifier earnout, whether that uh, two million pounds that might be due is either in cash or equity. Uh, the two million that is due is in cash, um, and that's probably the answer to that question. But it is self-funding. It is self-funding so because... Too, they'd have to, they'd have to, they'd have to uh, effectively uh, generate 2.4 million in cash and out of that 2.4 million we would pay 2 million in cash as part of the earnings. Thank you, Raj. Uh, a number of questions on, the, on dividends, uh, which I think I might uh, coagulate and say, is there yet in place a, a, a dividend policy? Uh, a number of people were keen to see whether it would be uh, moving ahead uh, in light of the very favourable profit outlook that uh, you've described. Yeah, our, I think if you look at the way that the, the underlying value of the business has grown over the last couple of years, I think it's fair to say that it's, it's probably trebled. Um, we've continued to pay uh, a dividend right through that period. But I think we've also demonstrated that we can very wisely invest our cash into businesses that will propel our growth. So whilst we're keen to maintain dividends as we go forward, and we've actually increased the absolute amount of dividends being paid this year to about 1.5 million from 1.4, um, and that's primarily on, on the back of the fact that as part of the Pebble Beach acquisition, the guys actually acquired in the market or acquired two million pounds worth of shares as part of the uh, acquisition. So I think dividends are important uh, going forward, 
but also we are, we are balancing that up against the opportunities for us to use the cash wisely to actually grow the overall size and value of the company. Yeah, I think that makes sense in, in your industry. Um, Ian, perhaps one for you on terms of the gross margin and indeed the absolute margins um, in the two core divisions uh, and how you might see them trending in the future. Uh, by divisions, do you mean between broadcast and surveillance? And surveillance yes. Well, the, the gross margins in broadcast and surveillance are, are broadly similar. We actually see a probably a slightly better um, gross margin in the surveillance business, interestingly or not. But there is quite a variety of mix. So in terms of the margin it will make, it can easily vary between, on our material margin side, excluding logistics costs, between 40 and 60 percent. And our material margin would often average out around 50, which gives us a gross margin of just over 40. So surveillance probably has a slightly better margin than broadcast overall. But within each, each side, you'll see a range of margins. Um, but what we're doing, therefore, is working with our supplier base to move that gross margin continuously upwards to improve it. But also, you can see with the acquisitions, that what we're actually doing is also helping to improve our gross margin because, as I said earlier, amplifier technology comes with an intrinsic gross margin north of 55%, and most software businesses come with margins north of 80%, Pebble Beach included. So what we're seeing with, in terms of the acquisitions and in terms of the organic business is an improvement in margins across the pace. We'll obviously, as the business grows as well, get a leveraging effect because, as John alluded to, if you go back to those who followed Vizlink for a while, Perhaps the mistakes of the past were putting in too high a fixed cost base. We've got a very flexible cost base. So even on things like the capitalized development costs, a large slice of that uh, investment that we made was actually with external um, contractors and consultants that we brought in. We came into a very specific and focused task. They finished that task, they left. So we didn't actually significantly increase our fixed cost base. And on the manufacturing side, we use a lot of subcontract manufacturing. So once the product is mature, and we're happy we've nailed down any um, Development issues, we'll move that manufacturing outside of the business, so again, we don't increase our fixed manufacturing base. So what that means is we're quite flexible in terms of our cost base, but also, as the business grows, you should see a natural improvement in our operating margin. Thank you, and uh, could you, just, on a technicality, clarify in the length of the new debt facilities? Uh, it's a three-year agreement with the bank. Um, so the RCF is effectively for three years with every, obviously every intention of renewing it at the end of that, of that term. Uh, the amortization is actually on the loan is actually over five years uh, with 12 month drops. So effectively we'll have the full benefit of the 10 million facility for the first 12 months. Thank you. Um, someone asks, uh, or they perhaps see, perceive some of the profit growth reported coming from a reduction in R&D uh, expenditure uh, last year. Could you put that into context uh, for a technology business? Uh, how important do you see R&D expenditure going forward, which I think you, you have covered, or perhaps put that into context of R&D relative to revenues? Well, I'll, I will do that as well, but what I would say is that last year, probably on the sales and marketing side, we had some one-off costs as we grew our channels and, and invested in some territories which effectively offset, if you like, the benefit from the small reduction in the amortization of capitalized development costs for those people following in that much detail. So the two of those, and I think in a way it's, it's shown in the operating profit bridge slide quite clearly, the two of those effectively set off each other in 2013. Going forward, we think as a P&L charge, as an expensed item for the P&L, to have an R&D cost of around 10% of revenue we think we're quite comfortable with. Um, the good thing going forward is that we can choose how much we need to invest and how much we want to invest, and we've got the funding both in terms of the cash and the profit base to actually decide ourselves what our investment levels are going to be. But I think the investment we put into in 2013, as John has alluded to, really in that quite key slide towards the end in terms of available markets, hasn't just refreshed our product base, it's regained product leadership and actually opened new marketplaces for us. So in terms of a return on investment going forward, through 14, 15, 16, 17, we think it's money extremely well spent. Thank you. Um, John, you, uh, you mentioned that some of the older Vizlink products have had, enjoyed a, a long product life cycle of up to 25 years. Uh, do you think that that will be materially lower given the pace of innovation for some of the newer products that you have and are about to introduce? Yeah, I think, I think the uh, lifetime of products will be different. So I think if you look at some of our satellite communications products, 
And also, if you look at uh, um, business that's done with security forces, for example, they actually want a very long uh, lifetime for a product and support for that product. And that will be good for us in the long term because it will get us into programs that uh, will give us uh, longer uh, contract periods which will benefit the group. I think when it comes to uh, some of the cellular technologies, there we see a much shorter uh, life cycle for those type of products. And there I think you are into uh, uh, the products, the individual products themselves, you know, will, will be much shorter and I think three years is appropriate for those, uh, for those products. So uh, it's horses for courses, different in different areas. Okay. Thank you. A uh, technical question uh, relating to the new camera backpack. And uh, we have a question as to whether, given the enhanced capabilities of it, uh, will it actually be consuming more energy and will there be a, a shorter battery lifespan uh, for the, the roaming version? Um, I think the short answer to that is, is no, um, because part and parcel of this is, you know, is battery life and battery management. And these uh, devices obviously can be plugged into um, power sources, for example, there's a command and control truck. Uh, so you've got that uh, capability. And in those trucks themselves, one of the new products that we've got is a product called the Ustream which actually takes all of those different types of technologies and feeds into one box. So whether that's microwave, cellular, uh, or um, through satellite, it's, uh, it's actually managed through that device. So I think, um, I think we're used to managing um, battery, battery life, and power, and uh, that's part and parcel of doing what we do. Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions relating to uh, to M and A. Um, first question is uh, the the pedal acquisition. This is from a shareholder. Uh, looks fantastic. Uh, could you positively affirm that being on AIM actually made it ex easier to execute at speed? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, undoubtedly. And, and saved a significant cost. Good to hear. And then in terms of the ongoing acquisition climate, uh, as economies improve, as quoted equities rise in, in rating, uh, are you going to adhere to the same rigorous criteria on, on value for making acquisitions, uh, regardless of the uptick in the economic cycle? Yes, we are. Short answers are always <laughs> the most effective uh, in that respect. Um, I think uh, oh, we've got uh, one more. You're getting a, an increasingly wide geographic spread of, uh, of clients and revenues. Um, Ian, do you have any concerns about where you are unable to match currency exposure uh, in terms of uh, production costs, or is this uh, are these markets that are mainly U.S. dollar uh, denominated? And do you have any conscious areas in terms of either Asia, Middle East, South America that you see as being particularly exciting going forward relative to uh, the travails of Western European economic growth? Uh, well, I'll answer the first part of that question, which is easy, because both the broadcast and surveillance sections out, out businesses outside of Western Europe, predominantly the business is done in US dollars. Uh, and also we have a manufacturing site in the U.S. in Billerica, just outside Boston. So we also source uh, from our suppliers in U.S. dollars. So broadly speaking, uh, we're a reasonably balanced business that isn't exposed in a trading sense to any major currency fluctuations. Uh, on a consolidation sense, again, for those who, who are familiar with the wonders of IFRS, uh, we do have uh, consolidation adjustments related to uh, foreign exchange. But again, that's, that's just part of being an IFRS listed group. Uh, in terms of areas that we're excited about, I think the regions we mentioned before that we see is great for us. We've opened in Sao Paulo, but that is to very much serve all of Latin America because we think Mexico, Venezuela, Argentina, as well as Brazil are important marketplaces for us going forward. Um, we've, we've got sales offices in Singapore because we see APAC being a very, a very strong region for us. 
um, but also the Middle East and even, even down into um, Sub-Saharan Africa, countries such as Nigeria, again, um, South Africa, um, again, areas where we're seeing good spend. So we see a good balance in our business between the traditional markets such as the US, which will always remain the largest broadcast market in the world, um, the UK and Europe, where again, the UK is the largest broadcast market in, in Europe, uh, and the growth markets. So we're happy to be balanced. And we very much see we have a five-region approach going into 2014. The five regions being North America, Latin America, um, MEA, APAC, and UK and Europe, and that's that's the way we see the world. So we, we think we've got a good balance. Great. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for your clarity. Uh, thank you to the audience for your attention and a wide range of interesting questions. Uh, I do know there are one or two of them about uh, you know, forecasting the future and looking at earnings per share, which are obviously difficult for the company to uh, to take a view on. I would again refer you to uh, the equity development website and the note that came out today where we have a very experienced analyst opinions on what may happen in the future, uh, but I'm sure it'll be uh, an interesting journey. Uh, just to comment that the full presentation, which we move through rapidly today, will be available on the company's website, yeah. and this uh, presentation has also been recorded should you wish to refer to it in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah.